What's going on internet? IG here again today. Today we're kicking off the OpenSUSE 13.1 series I guess and then this is basically an effort for me to transition my primary operating system over to OpenSUSE 13.1 transitioning over from a long-term support release of Ubuntu that I've been running as my primary distribution for about the last two years. So the idea of this series, if you're not already familiar with it, is explained in the video that I posted previously, so I'll chuck a link in the description below, uh, and that just kind of expounds some of the reasons as to why I chose to switch to OpenSUSE and, uh, and what I hope to achieve out of this. Basically, I want to be able to use this as my primary operating system, integrating with uh, different email accounts, different online accounts, uh, be able to handle plenty of multimedia, be nice and stable, and also be able to, um, you know, obviously perform well and uh, and be efficient as far as a keyboard-driven interface goes. So those are the sort of things that I'm looking for in OpenSUSE, and a vast array of software to be available would also be very nice. Um, so this is basically, essentially, with a few tweaks, this is essentially what you're going to be uh, looking at when you first install OpenSUSE 13.1, the GNOME edition. Um, so this is where we're going to start out today, and I have already installed a bunch of stuff, but I'm just going to run through what I've done so far, and some of the niggles that I've come across since then. Um, so, most of the work that you're going to be doing is going to be revolving around YAST. Uh, YAST is a fantastic administrator settings panel, and it pretty much includes what you like everything that you would want to control about your system. It's up, arguably one of the best features of OpenSUSE is your ability to come in here and change whatever, whenever, however. Um, and uh, they've got configuration down to the nth degree. Now one of the immediate things that you're going to notice a difference of between uh, what my desktop looks like and what yours would look like after a fresh install is probably the fonts. And uh, to be honest, font smoothing is something that I've always had an issue with OpenSUSE and uh, I have found a solution and I've got fonts looking quite nice uh, and I'll explain that a little bit later. But basically what you're going to want to do to begin with in OpenSUSE is enable some repositories. So as you can see, we open up the software manager, it'll load up uh, all the different repositories, it will refresh them. There won't be too many to begin with, but then you go into configuration and configure your repositories. And you can see here the repositories that I have enabled. I have GNOME apps, the Pac-Man repositories, the three core OpenSUSE repositories there, the MuzzLocker repository, Numix, Voku Screen, Elegance Colors, and the LibDVD CSS. The rest should be enabled by default, including the OSS, non-OSS, update source, and of course the, the CD, DVD device as well. Adding repositories is incredibly simple. All you have to do is hit the add button there and click on the community repositories and it will download a list of the repositories that are available from the community. Uh, the first one you will want to enable is the Pac-Man repository. Once you've enabled that, you'll be able to get most of the codecs and software that you'll be needing to use this system on a daily basis. Now, if all that is a little bit too complicated for you, then it's pretty simple to use what is known as one-click install. Now, if we go to Firefox and you go to the OpenSUSE software website, you can see here that even in Firefox you have a drop-down search menu for OpenSUSEsoftware.org and you search for whatever software you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for uh, Chromium. You can see here that Chromium pops up there in the search results. Click on Chromium and I can say direct install and that'll install it straight away on my system. You can also look at the other versions that are available, including rolling versions or maybe up really recent up-to-date versions. And all you would have to do is simply one-click install to add that repository and install the software. So this helps for a lot more obscure software that you can't find using the normal software repositories. For instance, Kazam, a simple screencasting program that I used on Ubuntu quite a bit. Uh, as you can see, they don't have it by default in their repositories. So I go into the OpenSUSE software service, click continue because it is an unstable app, and I can click one-click install to enable the GNOME apps repository and thus install Kazam from there. So it's pretty straightforward, and uh, it's actually quite simple to use, even though you do have to do a couple of clicks to get through the installation wizard. Now, one blog that I would like to point to that I think uh, it would be quite helpful for anyone who's going to be using OpenSUSE 13.1 as their primary distribution, and they're just setting it up, 
uh, JDG Lever. Uh, he's got a pretty good blog here uh, and a pretty good post on how to set up OpenSUSE for the first time, uh, including running the updates, configuring the repositories, installing graphics drivers, configuring any YAS settings, including the NTP servers so that you get the right time on your system, etc. And, uh, and also adding support for restricted multimedia fo uh, formats. This is probably going to be one of the most complicated um, processes of adding restricted codecs to a distribution um, as, far as, a, as far as Linux goes. Um, so terminal command is what he gives here. However, there are plenty of ways that you can install restricted codecs by simply a one-click install from the OpenSUSE community. So as you can see, if I just Google OpenSUSE 13.1 restricted codex. Then you can see here that you've got the OpenSUSE community.org and from there you've got a simple one-click install for either GNOME or KDE desktops. And all you have to do is enable that one, all you have to do is click on that one-click link in Firefox and you'll be away. But if you do prefer to do things in the terminal then you've got a simple command you can copy paste here. You can also install a couple of random uh, selections of software that he has uh, he has recommended. He is using a KDE desktop, so it's a bit different as well. Now, this is where one of the things that I had a major issue with uh, with OpenSUSE in the past, and while it was a bit better with 13.1, it still wasn't fixed entirely, and that is subpixel font rendering. You don't really notice how much this makes a difference until you are stuck with a distribution that doesn't do it well, and unfortunately, OpenSUSE is one of those distributions. So all you need to do is enable the MuzzLocker repository, which uh, he explains very easily here. And there is a one-click install available for this as well. Um, but this will basically uh, swap out some of the free type um, libraries and packages so that it replaces the way that the system renders fonts. And you'll be able to use subpixel uh, font hinting um, a lot more successfully. Then all you need to do to enable this is to go into GNOME Tweak Tool, which we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in in the future, and uh, and simply enable the hinting and anti-aliasing to RGBA and then full hinting. You'll also notice I'm using the Droid Sans font collection uh, as my desktop font. That's just a personal preference thing. He also gives some good suggestions of what to do with Firefox to make it look a bit nicer and also uh, some useful add-ons that he uses. Uh, but yeah, it's just a very helpful very helpful blog post for anyone starting out. It's also worth mentioning the perfect desktop guide that How to Forge put out for a lot of different uh, Linux distributions. And as you can see, they have a guide for both KDE and GNOME. Uh, so obviously I'm using GNOME, so that would make more sense for me. But they run through the installation, enabling repositories and uh, software recommendations as well. All very useful stuff. But I guess that brings me to where my desktop is at now. And at the moment, it's still looking fairly vanilla, um, although I have installed all the updates that are available for it, and I've also installed a bunch of different apps that I know I'm going to be using over the course of, uh, yeah, over the course of my primary computing experience. And due to GNOME's online account integration, uh, I have been able to add quite a few of my online accounts from various places around the web. And they are integrating into the contacts, the uh, mail, the calendar quite well. And I'm pretty happy with how that is being handled. So all is going well in regards to the functionality of the GNOME desktop at this point. There are a few things that I will continue to tweak, but I'll get onto those later. Uh, probably the next most important thing to talk about is GNOME extensions if you're going to be using the GNOME desktop. I'm going to go into these in more detail in the following video, but for right now, uh, all you will need to do is be able to go to extensions.gnome.org, and once you're there, you'll have a quite decent library of GNOME extensions that are available. You will need to enable the Firefox plugin so that you can access these extensions and install them on your system direct from the browser. And once you've done that, you can install however many extensions you like. So now what I'd like to do is, in, uh, is just enable some different themes and icons that I enjoy. As you can see before, I did have the Numix uh, repository enabled there. So that's the theme I'm going to go with. I'll go with Numix Circle for the icon theme, and I'll go for Elegance Colors for GNOME Shell theme. We'll get ourselves a new wallpaper simply by uh, enabling one that I've got in the home folder here. And there you have it. So this is where my OpenSUSE install is looking thus far. It's getting there. Uh, I will add some more functionality to it in the next video. 
Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any questions or recommendations of good software or good repositories to use in OpenSUSE or even GNOME extensions, then leave them in the comments below or on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. So thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.